Hey y'all, I'm Billy Hell, and you're in the Billy Hell Guitar Room. Uh, today we're going to talk about gold foil pickups. The reason we're going to do that is because I completely went down the rabbit hole of gold foils, and uh, maybe maybe you, like me, really didn't know what a gold foil was, why it was different. Was it a gold foil simply because it had gold foil on the top? Or um, what? What? I don't know. I never had one. And... I was building some tellies and I was going to buy some gold foils just for to be different. And they were like stupid expensive. The ones I were looking at I think were 400 to pick up. And I wasn't going to do that. So I put it away. And then I was at a friend's house, Oliver Wood, the Wood Brothers. Um, I will go ahead and say that if you're in, look, watching this channel, you will love the Wood Brothers. Just great songwriting and great all kinds of eclectic blues and great bass and uh, it's just awesome. So go check them out. Anyway, he said, I got a new guitar. It's a Bobcat, a 66 Bobcat, and i never seen one, I don't think. And I'm kind of the kind of guy who looks at all guitars. And so he handed it to me, super resonant. It was uh, had three pickups, which is super rare, by the way. I found out later when I went looking for one. And uh, sounded so good, and I was I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I was on the internet, I was everywhere, I was going to stores, I'm like, uh, please keep your eye out for one. And ultimately I landed with this guy. Now this is not a Bobcat, it's the, it's the big brother of the Bobcat. This is a Silhouette. Who makes uh, these guitars? We'll only talk about this briefly. Um, oh, and at the end of this we're going to talk about a new gold foil alternative to uh, buying old gold foils. And uh, I can, the experience I bring to it is playing all these gold foils we're about to look at, which, let's talk about that right now. I've got gold foils. Uh, the, the thing that I just did that I'm super stoked about is I got, gold, I got a gold foil in my 1962 ES125 thin body cutaway uh, Gibson, which I thought, could this be possible? So that's back here. And then I've got, what else? Oh, then I took some old gold foils on a Telecaster and built a guitar. So we have that. And then finally we have an acoustic guitar that I bolted a gold foil into. And there's a lot of amazing quality. So maybe we'll talk about that real quick. Um, like on the Gibson, it's a hollow body, right? And I was looking for a pickup that I could sound somewhat acoustic-y on. Maybe Southern Rock or uh, Alt Texas, that kind of stuff. And uh, then you hit the switch and then it's thick and you're straight in the blues. And the P90s weren't doing that for me. They were too, I love woolly on a, on a pickup, but they were too uh, blanket over the speaker woolly. You know what I mean? And so I, I, tried a, I spent a lot of money trying to find things to put in this uh, Gibson that we'll go look at in just one second and get the sound. So I'm kind of leading you into what the sound of the gold tone is gold. I'm sorry, gold foil. Gold tone is a great company too. Did I say uh, no one's paying me for this and all of this stuff I buy on my own because I can't stop myself? Compressor going into a 68. I always run a compressor. I'm sorry if that offends the tone. I'll turn it off. Okay. 
I'll turn it off and now we'll just listen to it without a compressor. Not, not too different. Champ back here, hero of the room, bought from the original owner. Uh, now worth so much money. So this is the the silhouette. Um, super cool. Uh, back when I bought this, you could get them for six hundred bucks. Now they're eight hundred plus a hundred shipping, so you're into nine. They make uh, just real quick. They make a reissue of this, and the uh, crazy part is, is the reissue does not have uh, gold foils. It has single coils. That's like uh, making a cowboy action figure who carries, I don't know, Glocks or something. It makes no sense to me. So uh, if uh, anyone wants to recreate some guitars, let me know and we can actually do it the right way. So, awesome guitar, but let's jump off of this. So you've heard these guys. We could get it dirty. Just a little bit of gain here give you the taste. I never know what to play. I should come up with like before I start talking. guitar is not flat so it sits in guitar stands in a way that will make you nervous. Alright, alright, so part two in the P90 journey. Jam! Wait, no, no, this is, we're going to put this up for a second. <laughs> part two in the P90 journey. Telecaster. They're easy to build. They're cheap. I mean, this is a, I think this is called a snakehead. This is, and I uh, switched the neck out with the different neck that was just laying around here that I liked. And I uh, did the leather tooling on the body, and I did the leather tooling on the headstock, and I have had so many pickup variations in here. Um, I could do a whole video on that, and none of them work. So what are you looking at here? You're looking at, in the bridge, that is out of a, it's right below you, you can't see it. I'll grab it. It's out of a K-lap steel guitar. It's a gold foil and it's not cheap the the uh, lap steel costs less than just the gold foil so I pulled one off and put it on in the bridge and then the neck was a gift a Christmas present thank you and uh, that is just like out of the Bobcat and so I wanted to see what a new guitar would sound like with old gold foils now your question is going to be Jim how much do these cost well, if you go to Reverb right now, a gold foil, just a gold foil, and make sure you're not buying the cover for a gold foil, that you're actually getting a pickup. Um, gold foil is 180 bucks all day long, just for one, which it, they used to be 80 bucks. You could get them for 60 bucks, and you might pay 100 bucks. Now they're 180 bucks, so I'm glad I have a few laying around. So does that sound, now we have a different body here, but does that sound much different? It shouldn't because it's a gold foil and a, and a telly.
it does it. What, what were we on there? Uh, we were on both. I'll go just to the neck. I am trying to stay in the same vein so they you can subsonically hear the difference. Okay, so I built this, but there's limitations. What are they? Let me tell you. Um, you can only mount these, but they have two screw holes right here through the middle. And so that means you're going to have to figure out how to just screw these into your flat top. And that's a limitation. Also, the uh, silver tone are the Deer Mond, which is what you're really looking for here. The Deer Mond pickups have no poles. You're not going to adjust anything. It is what it is. By the way, learn the hard way. The uh, magnets in these are not as wide as a magnet in, say, a humbucker or a single coil. It's more narrow. So if you ever get an uh, old uh, bobcat and you're like, the neck is so skinny at the base, it's because they've got to keep those strings narrow to stay in the magnetic field of the pickup, of the old pickup. And uh, I thought I was getting bad pickups, and then I realized, no, it's your bridge. you got to tuck it all in, and we're going to... I like a closer string set anyway, um, but it's something to be aware of. So there's a little lesson for you. Um, this... Where is it? One second. Let me try not to knock anything over. So handy. This is the lap steel that I stole that one pickup from. It's fully functional. It still has a pickup in it. And... It is a Gaia tone, and it's probably a 1960 Gaia tone. I stole it, man. I felt like I stole it. And I still have a functional lappy, which is great. Sometimes my daughter borrows that. When I have another whole thing here, we'll talk about one day. So that's it, uh, dirty. And then... Uh, describe how things sound to me and I do like a round note, a round tone. And I and I do like thick as opposed to thin and piercing like everyone else. So that's this. It's awesome. Give me a break. Uh, I don't play it as much as I should. I got it out for this video and I'm like, dude, why aren't you playing this guitar? Now let's come see the sexiest thing maybe in the room. Maybe. Okay, so right over here, I can't grab it. It's laden with hats and pictures. Um, is a 1956 ES-125 full body, all original. All original. I have the paperwork from the guy that bought it in 1957 or 56. He was 19. He got his parents to co-sign for it. I have it all. It's like one day someone will pay me money for that guitar. I don't really play it too much. But when I got it, I was like, I need the Rock and Roll Brother, that ES-125. So this is a ES-125 1962 thin body cutaway. And it started its life. It got. It made it to my house for one reason. Can you see it? It's got the W here. 
Somebody snapped the neck off this thing, and let's hope they did it, you know, decades ago. Fixed it, and then when it came to me, the tuners were terrible. Uh, the pickups were Seymour Duncan's. The uh, bridge, the bridge was okay, and all the electronics were gone. It was just a, just a not much, and I paid very not much. And if I were to buy something like this uh, now, that was original, it would be a lot of money. I'm going to scoot up a little bit. So, I kept playing this, and I, this is the one where I wanted to sound acoustic and bluesy. And I did under, uh, I did these pickups, these, these uh, film pickups that they use on 335 sometimes, or uh, arch, arch top guitars. And I did uh, different pickups and all that. And so then I started buying P90 mounts, and I took Dremel tool, and I started uh, cutting them out so that I could force my old pickups in here, my old gold foils in here. And I, I cut a lot of them up. It didn't look good. It sounded okay, but I couldn't adjust anything. And then I remembered Victory Guitars uh, from Reverb, because I'd seen them. And I went and looked them up. I read about it. I wrote the guy a lot of PMs, and he wrote me back. And he makes the dang P90 rings. And he makes, look at that, that's his... Uh, gold foil and so here's the thing that I believe I found the reason gold foils sound the way they do is because they made them cheap for monkey wards and all those companies or those uh, stores back then and they made them out of magnets that are essentially the same magnet that you would use on your refrigerator back then nothing high tech nothing expensive and I think those weak magnets are what made them sound and make them sound so good now right um, it's my theory and uh, he's not giving his recipe away at Victory Guitars, and I'll have a link down in the description. You can go check out all the stuff. He sells these in pairs for oh, $155, I think. They're $72 a pop, $72 a pop, and you can buy different tops. You can have toaster tops or this S. I call it the S. I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of different options. And so I was like, yes, it was so easy, too, because I had my two wires hanging out. I uh, loaded this up, soldered it on, screwed it down, existing holes, didn't do any, you know, meaningful damage. I tuned everything. I can verify. Let's verify just for, just for fun. I'm going to make sure so that when I see this video later, I don't feel guilty about it. Just take a look. I have hip shot tuners on here. Hip shot tuners, do it. If you have a guitar you love, just go get them. I'll guarantee they have something that'll drop in there. No one's paying me. What am I playing? I don't know. That's no dirt, just through the 68, which sounds like it's warming up. Hopefully, I, I redid this video for the sound. Hopefully, my stereo mic is picking up how good it sounds. Just very, very, uh, sounds like the guitar. And I'm just on the bridge. Request. It's not digital. It's not fake. And I have I have all the fakeness. Trust me, I have all the digitals. But uh, this is just strings and and old magnets or new old magnets. 
And this pickup cost me 72 bucks, and the trim ring cost me a yeah, 55. Let's call it nine bucks. And what a affordable solution! And I got to put a P90 in here. And if I was really cool, I'd put a P90 in the bottom. But I'm really going on here, uh, bridge pickups. I hate them. And I thought, well, if the P90 is wooly and it's in the bridge, maybe that'll make me hate it less. So this is the P90. I swear it's in tune. I'm hearing it weird. These are flat wounds, by the way. Um, I, I've tried non-flat wounds and I just don't like it on this guitar. So now we'll put it together, which cut out all of the uh, hiss. take that uh, re or that yeah take the reverb off and it would be even more acoustic yeah I found the drier you get it the better it sounds if you're going for acoustic all right so we'll get it dirty then I guess this is the real point of the video I've owned all these gold foils now I've played around with them I put them on different guitars and go foils winning at this point in my life and um, then I find Victory, who is an affordable guy. Who's the, Vic, he's just a guy here in America making gold foils. He'll talk to you on reverb. You can ask him a question. So this is uh, with the dirt on there. I'd like to turn that compressor back on, but we don't need to. The amp's probably doing it for me. Can you hear it? We took this to the studio, and we took a uh, another guitar that is uh, tours the country, and we were A-Bing them. And you could hear it. I was sitting in front of the amp, and so when uh, O would play one guitar and then he'd play the other, this thing sounded more dimensional, to use a fancy word. I know you can't all run out and buy yourself a 62 ES125 thin body cutaway, but holy smokes. There's some magical guitars out there, and, and they're all different, and it's all up to you and what you like. But this thing, it's, you don't see people running around with these too much on stage, and, and I'm sure they'll feed back, but we can fix that. put on myself anyway uh, I got one more thing to show you I guess my point here is is go foils are awesome check them out if you don't want to get an old one which is a guy who's bought a bunch go ahead and try victory first it will get you there 
and it will get you there for a fair price. And he's a cool dude. So we're going to go look at my acoustic and we'll talk about it and then we'll be out of here. I have so many things to talk about in this room and I wanted to do this before I lost it all because I will learn so much about a topic and then move on to the next topic and uh, then I lose it. This is a 20 year old, pretty sure it's 20, Art and Luthery out of Canada. Bought it at my guitar store, walked in, it was 250 bucks, I wanted a parlor, it was black, and it played good. And I walked out, it was a 10 minute decision. Since then, I have friends like, uh, I'm not going to name drop, I have friends that are uh, professional songwriters and they have songs that you've heard of and they uh, sing for money and I keep seeing them show up with this guitar. These guys could have any guitar they want and they're playing an Art and Luthery and I think I'm saying that right. These are made in Canada and uh, so I guess I did okay for my 250 bucks but I wanted to uh, make it acoustic or make it electric and so this is once again a uh, pickup from Victory. I screwed it to a piece of wood. The hole in this guitar is just a little smaller than, and I haven't tried their acoustic pickup. They have one that has wings on it that you can non-invasively put on your guitar. But this guitar has been beat around and I didn't care if I screwed a couple holes in it. Uh, it doesn't care either. And we're dirty, so let's, let's undirty, all right? Yeah. So with the compressor, and let's say you're a fingerstyle guy, which I'm not, but I'll play around with it. saying what but what give me a break it's awesome Every time I walk by this guitar, I'm happy that it's here. Um, we're going to take a little uh, philosophy sidebar. All these guitars in this room, and to, at this point I've called out random guitars and everything in here means something. Like one belonged to my grandmother's preacher and uh, one, the first guitar ever built and stuff like that. If you're new and you have one guitar and you're like, I want to have a lot of guitars, I think you really only need about four guitars. But the trick is figuring out which four you need. And the only way to do that is to play a ton of guitars. You may play a guitar today, love it, and a year, not like it, and a year from then, realize you can never get rid of that guitar. So, the other trick is not selling the guitar before you realize that it's the guitar, which I've done. 68 Viber Champ. Uh, by the way, I was going to do this through my Supro Blues King. You can't see it. Supro Blues King 1 Watt, just because it's also an affordable amp that I think stands up to, well, the 68 Vibro Champ, man, it wins every time as far as love 
Uh, you turn it on, you're like, okay. I understand now why this is now worth so much money. Um, but the Supro Blues King 1 watt, and I also have the 5 watt if you want to like get louder, but so good, so cheap, and it's got all the grit and all the stuff you need. Let's see about some delay just for fun. Maybe too much. Sometimes delays too much. sound from such a little thing. All right, y'all. No foils. Uh, Victory guitar. You can buy old ones if you want. Um, or you can get yourself a new one, stick it in anything you want. You know what else he has is uh, Telecaster uh, pick guards that are cut with the gold foil in it. So if you had a Tele and you're like, I want to put a gold foil on that, you could do it so easy. And once again, the link will be below. And once again, he doesn't even know I'm making this video. So uh, hopefully he'll be like, hey, that was really good, Jim. No, uh, trust me, if somebody said I want to give you free stuff, I certainly would take it. I started finger picking because uh, Oliver Wood only finger picks, and I'm like, uh, I've got to be as cool as, well, it's never going to happen, but I, I, I got to try to be as cool as Oliver back up because he's the dude that got me all messed up on gold foils um, how much money and time have I spent on this plus I've realized that that doing all these things and building guitars and taking things it's uh, how I keep myself sane uh, in this little room so that's good so thank you Oliver and thank you guys if you're watching um, once again I have so many things to talk about I could just do one thing at a time in this room and we probably would have plenty of videos um, the next thing I'm probably going to talk about, where are you, is uh, my Yari acoustic and what you should know about Yaris because half the people that I show it to don't even know what I'm talking about. And I would like, you don't know what a Yari guitar is? So that'll be probably next. All right, I'm Billy Hale. You've been hanging out in my room and I appreciate you. And uh, just go ahead and Tell yourself you're going to have a great day. And that way you win. Probably. All right, y'all. Bye.